So you may have heard that myelodysplastic syndromes are so-called clonal diseases. Um, so I'm going to write the word here clone um, for clonal referring to clonal diseases and myelodysplastic syndromes you may remember from some of the other videos are these malignancies or cancers of the bone marrow that could lead either to bone marrow failure or to leukemia. But what does it mean if we say that these diseases are clonal? Well, there's little difference between the clones in myelodysplastic syndromes and the clones in other cancers. So what I'm going to do in this short talk is first explain what a clone is, then we're going to talk about subclones and something that goes with this term, namely clonal evolution. So clones, subclones, and clonal evolution. So let's start with a clone. What is a clone exactly? So basically what a clone is, is a group of cells that all come from the same parent cell. So we've got a parent, let's say there's a parent cell, and the parent has offspring because the cell will divide and one will become two and two will become four and these cells have something in common you can see that these cells down here all have the same parent so they share the same ancestry so that's the first thing that is important secondly they share the same genetics so let's say, for instance, that in this clone, the parent cell had a genetic abnormality. Then, when the cell divided into two, each one of the two also received this abnormality from the parent. And when they divided into four, this genetic abnormality was transferred to all the offspring as well. Now these, this is a, a small example, but of obviously these cells can go into the millions. Now if you have a clone of cells where the parent was a malignant cell, a cancer cell, such as in MDS, a malignant cell, then we speak of a malignant clone. So this clone here, let's say that the parent cell here was a malignant cell, this clone would then be a malignant or cancerous clone. Sometimes you'll hear the word monoclonal disease, monoclonal, and that means that all these cells are the same and come from one parent cell. So that's monoclonal disease. So malignancies or cancer are usually monoclonal diseases. Now, what is a subclone? Let's say that in one of these cells, let's just take this one here, that cell there uh, develops a second abnormality. All right, so you can see I've put a, a little Y there. And now the children of these cells, or the offspring, let's just draw a few of those here as well. Now, remember clones, all these cells are supposed to be identical. Now it's difficult for me to draw it, draw them identical. My artistry is not that fantastic. But let's say we've got all the X's that we're supposed to have that's been transferred as the cells divided. And we also have all the Y's. Right. So now you can see that this group of cells is different from the original parent group, which only had the X because they also have the Y. So this is now a subgroup, let's draw a line around this, that has formed from the original. So from one of these cells, a second mutation uh, happened, and now all the other cells contains that mutation as well. So that is what we would call a sub clone. Now here the term is also often used um, of clonal, clonal evolution, which basically means that there has been a progressive 
change from the original to this one here. Now you can see the X was there only. The addition of the Y, this is clonal evolution, that's the additional change. And you will now probably ask me now, what does this mean? Does it matter? Who cares about all these subclones? Well, this is very important because when we treat patients with myelodysplastic syndromes or perhaps other cancers, it could be that let's say we use chemotherapy number one. And when you treat the patient with chemo number one, all these cells with only the X are easily killed off because they are sensitive to chemo number one. But now this subclone with a Y is resistant to chemo number one. So it could just be that this new mutation indicated by the Y conferred some form of resistance against chemo one and is able to survive even in the presence of this chemo. So we say that this subclone has what we call, and this is an important word, a survival, survival advantage. You can see why. No? The reason is easy. It is resistant against chemo one, so it's got a survival advantage. And now that the original clone, let's say this is clone one, has been killed, the subclone or clone 2 here does not have to compete with clone 1 anymore for nutrients and, and, and oxygen and blood supply. So it has an additional advantage that it's got more space and support to grow and can often then take over, let's say, the bone marrow in the case of myelodysplastic syndromes. So this is often what happens when a cancer progresses despite treatment. So you give a chemotherapy and the cancer gets better. But what you don't know and you can't see is that some of these cells get secondary mutations that are resistant, resistant against the chemo and they start growing out. And then you find this disease that came out that is now more resistant perhaps than the original or may need a very different chemo. So let's say chemo number two. So it could be that you can kill this subclone off with chemo number two as long as we don't have the development of a third or another additional mutation that confers resistance, for instance, against chemo number two. So it could be that you've got another one starting here, a third subclone that is now resistant against chemo number two. And this is exactly the reason why some cancers are so difficult to cure is because of clonal evolution, new mutations, and more resistant subclones. I hope that clears up some of the, uh, the concepts about uh, cancer for you.